to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Today's video is a requested video. This has been requested for some time by probably numerous people and we're going to talk a little bit about how to do a tag print in the back of the inside of a collar of a t-shirt underneath the, the tag. Okay, So I'm going to try to show you a couple different ways you might do it and set it up. But remember that there's probably, you know, over a million different ways you could do this, okay? So this is just a couple ways that you might set it up. But before I go on, Catspit Production sells screen printing equipment and supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. And we offer free shipping on Raynor equipment all year round. And you can find many of the featured products in my videos on catspitscreenprintsupply.com. So check it out. Okay, so a lot of people have asked for a video about how to print a tag print on the inside of a t-shirt collar, you know, under the tag, or if you were branding, you know, some people actually remove tags and stuff like that, or they have their own tags, and some people screen print a tag here on the inside of the back of the collar and the neck of the t-shirt, okay? So there would be a little branding print, whether you leave the tag in or not or whatever, your business logo and phone number could be on the inside of the shirt. It's a, it's a, it, it can be a branding tool and it can also be a marketing tool. As a commercial screen printer, if you put your name and your number on all the shirts that you print for businesses and stuff, then, you know, it, it helps get your name out there, especially if you do uh, events, organizations and groups and things like that where they get the shirt and then your logo and your number is on the inside of the back collar. So it's good for branding and it's good for marketing as well. Okay. However, it is an extra step and you know, it can be a lot of work, especially manually speaking. Um, so there are probably a million different ways to set this up. I'm just going to show you quickly two different ways you can set it up, uh, whether you have the right sleeve palette for it or if you just have a pocket palette which is what I have today that would work because my sleeve palette as I'll show you uh, is just too big okay but we'll talk about that the two different setups that I'll show you okay and you know as far as the ink goes uh, you know depending on your your the ink you're using you may want to kind of use lightweight artwork meaning not very open, wide open printing a lot of ink areas, you know. Um, today I created a design specifically for the tag print and I made it a lightweight type of design, but for Plastisol ink and what I'm doing today, I probably really didn't need to do that. So it, it's probably more of a consideration when you're using an ink that's so thin that you're worried about it going to the backside. Okay, so let's Let's move in and take a close-up look at the artwork and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. We'll do a test print and everything so you can see what I'm talking about. Here I have a little pocket palette and I'm using this to do the tag print and I'll show you how we do that. But first, let's, let's talk a little bit about this as we do a test print, okay? First of all, remember that when you're on the inside of the shirt, you know, there's this is a rag shirt, a test shirt, so there's a lot of prints on it, but the the finished side of the shirt, the shirt that, you know, the side of the shirt that you normally print is the knit side. It has the surface of the knit that you want to print on. Generally speaking, the inside of the t-shirt, the, the way the knit is, it's the back side of the knit. So it's kind of like a more gaping, open knit here, okay? And if you look at it closely on one of your shirts, you should see what I'm talking about. Most of the time, the front side of the shirt, the outside of the shirt, is going to be a finer, smoother print surface than the inside of the shirt. Okay, so being as though we're printing on the collar, we're going to be on the inside of the shirt. So, let's just do a test print and talk about the artwork, really. Alright, I have this little design here. It's a little bit of line art with a little half tone inside. And, you know, with Plastisol inks, I probably really didn't need to do that. Because remember that it's more of a gaping knit, so if you do use dot, it's, it's, you know, some of it could get lost in the gaping holes of the knit. Okay, you follow? And uh, with Plastisol inks, you know, this is really sitting more on top. 
of the fabric and you don't have to worry so much you shouldn't have to worry so much about it going all the way through to the back side okay and I'm gonna hit it again watch and this is just our test print okay and I'm putting normal pressure this is a regular plastisol ink normal pressure I could even you know do a little flash hit if you had to for some reason it should be able to withstand that. Everything should be fine. Okay. Plastisol inks, a tag print should be fairly easy to do. Now watch, I'll show you. Let's, let's cure this so it doesn't get all smudged up. Or semi-cure it, I should say. Okay, and hopefully you'll be able to see this, but as we pull this back, you, you're not seeing the print on this side. And that's probably two things. It's the plastisol ink, because as you know, the plastisol ink likes to sit on top of the fabric more so than soak into it, right? And also, I made a very thin, lightweight design, as I call it, okay? So it wasn't like this print over here. You can see, actually see with this white ink, you can see it coming through the shirt, right? And that's not what you want on a tag print. You don't want this to be on the outside of the back of the shirt, right? So you have to make sure that that's not going to happen. Okay, so with a water-based ink, you know, which is so much more, you know, so, so much, it's thinner. <laughs> trying to be grammatically correct. It's thinner and you know, it soaks into the fabric more. So in that case, I think your artwork is a lot more critical as far as it being lightweight and allowing you to put down minimal ink and get the print that you want. Okay, so what I would do to do a tag print with this particular setup is first of all, we can put a little spray tack like this. We want to spray tack the pocket palette, but not the palette palette. Okay, I want this smooth and clean of everything because it's how I'm going to do the shirt. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the shirt and grab it by right the armpits and fold it in half. Hopefully you can see this and pull it up like that. All right, so does that make sense? All I did was grab the shirt by the, by the armpits, right? Just, okay, and maybe I'll show you that, okay, but I don't know, hopefully you can see that. <laughs> Alright, so it's basically just folding it in half at the armpits and pulling it under the pocket palette, and then we're going to pull this up here. And you gotta, you know, you're going to have to make some marks. You probably want to know where you want your collar and stuff like that. I'm not sure exactly where mine is. And then you should be able to take this and tack it down. Okay, so there I have... I can do my print. Okay, so let's let's see where it, where it's landing. That's you know it's all right. Let's try it. And this is a little bit of four wheeling because we've got some of the collar and the tag that's going to interfere with where the screen is sitting. So it's what I call four wheeling. You kind of have to roll with it. Okay, so there it is there, and that's not that's not a bad print at all. But we'll go ahead and beef it up a little. You know, just to try to show you, we can, you know, with a plastisol ink, this should be fairly easy. You shouldn't have to be so tremendously concerned that the um, ink is going to seep through to the back side or to the front side, you know, of the back of the shirt. Okay, and, and again, now when you're, if you're printing and you're doing a production run, you may want to have a flash cure set up so you can just swing it over and flash it and, and, and take it off the press. And then we're going to look at how, how do we put this through the belt dryer? You know, how, how would we want to get this through the belt dryer and make it cure properly all the way? Okay, but now it should be cured, you know, semi-cured to the touch so that I can handle it and pull it off and not have to worry about ruining it. Okay, and there you go. 
there's the little tag print okay so let me let me show you kind of how you might do it off of a different palette okay and um, and then we'll look at how, how the heck do you get these things through the belt dryer. Another way you can load the collar is use a sleeve palette. Now, this is actually a long sleeve palette or a sweatpant palette. And that's why I couldn't really use it today because it's actually too long. It brings the, the, the edge out here too far out for me to use because I only have 20 by 24 screens in, in house right now. Um, if I had a 23 by 31, I could use this, okay, because then it's a bigger screen, it'll bring the design out here. But basically, you would take the shirt by the collar this time, and you're just going to drag it up over the top, and you just kind of loop it down like that. You know, and of course, you got to get your system set up to how you're putting it, and yeah, who knows if I had mine straight when we just printed that, I don't know really. <laughs> but uh, here's the point, you know what I'm saying? So this is another way you can do inside the collar. All right, let me do that again for you. Here's the t-shirt. It's just, you know, so you just kind of bring it up here wherever you want, and then you can tuck this down like this and then like that. Okay, and then that would be it. And again, now, if you had, like I have a six color six station press, so if I had six of these pallets, I could do this and rotate them and use the flash cure to semi-cure them so that I could take them off really easily and put them on the belt dryer. <clears throat> okay, because this is going to be a little difficult to put on the belt dryer and get a nice cure on because of where the print is on the shirt. And we don't want to have to turn the shirt inside out, you know, or anything to print it because that makes extra work. The reason why I suggest semi-curing, flash curing on press is so that when you, when you get to putting these on the belt dryer for the final cure, if you don't do it on press, you can deal with it and do whatever you want. You can do something as simple as that and you know just as long as the thing gets some heat. You understand? This is fine. That could go through and that should get enough heat especially because we semi-cured it. Okay? You could also do a little flip out like this if you wanted to. Okay, but this, you have to make sure when you do it like this, you have to make sure that it's not going to touch the heating element inside. Make sure your heating elements are high enough for this to clear under there because now you've, you know, folded it a little bit. Okay, so see, there's two, two simple ways to do it. You can just simply do this when you get it on here and leave the tag just kind of like that. Okay. Or you can flip it out and fold, do a kind of foldy job like this you know and it doesn't have to be perfect you're just smushing this down and making sure that you have enough clearance if this tag rubs up on the heating element it may burn or curl okay so you you know if you don't if you don't want the tag rubbing up on there then you got to make sure it's tucked in somehow okay so that's why tag prints can be a little bit cumbersome in that the curing and stuff you know it, it can be a little bit difficult let me try to recap a little bit because I know there'll be a big difference in using plastisol ink to do the tag print as opposed to water-based ink to do the tag print okay so my recommendations for water-based is definitely try to create a very lightweight piece of artwork something maybe with some half tone some finer lines Okay, you're going to want to be up on a higher mesh count. Okay, you want to use a harder squeegee, a higher squeegee durometer. You want to try to print a lesser volume of ink. And when you print it, you want to try to use the least amount of pressure needed so that the water-based ink will sit more on, in place rather than pushing it into the knit. Okay, and ultimately, if you're having a problem with that, you could do one of two things or one of many things maybe, but uh, you could use a beefier shirt or possibly do your tag prints with a little bit of Plastisol ink, okay? Because, you know, the print that we did today, the tag print that I did today, that I showed you today, with the little fine lines and dot, even though it's Plastisol, that's a soft hand print, okay? You're never going to feel it. It's not, it's not uh, heavy, rubbery, sticking off of the shirt in three dimensions or anything like that. 
because it was on a 230 mesh with a 45 line half tone at a 15 degree angle, it was fine line and dot. So, you know, that the, 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 the lightweight artwork can help you in not possibly not pushing the ink through to the, to the back side of the shirt where it can be seen on the back of the shirt. And I think that's one of the, mo you know, the biggest problems that people have. So, uh, you know, maybe a plastisol ink or definitely a plastisol ink would, you know, probably would be easier to do a tag print with. But don't fear that because it'll be soft hand as well. If you, you know, the bottom line is, is that if you know what you're doing with plastisol inks and you can control the way the artwork is created, you can create a soft hand print in most any circumstance with plastisol. It just takes a little bit of experience and know-how and doing, you know, doing it the right way. In fact, a lot of the shirts that you see printed out there that you might think are water-based are actually uh, plastisol. When you print plastisol on white shirts, you can print it really a really low volume of ink, and it it feels just like the shirt. Okay, so it's the same you know same kind of feel as a water-based print. You know, you it's just a different way of printing on different colored shirts and blah 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 blah. Okay, so I could go on and on about it, but um, I think I think that's it. So so. With a plastisol ink, it's going to be a little bit easier. You can probably do more with the artwork. With a water-based ink, it'll probably be a lot more challenging to prevent it from going to the back side of the shirt. So there you have it. I hope that helped you out, at least with setup. And don't forget that the two different setups that I showed here will require two different film positive placements. This pocket printer has it facing one way, and then with the sleeve palette, the, the print is facing the other way. Okay, so don't forget to look at your setup completely before you start doing anything. Come to the press, put everything here, get the, the size screen and your artwork, your film positive, and lay everything out and see exactly how it's going to be set up so that you can do things right the first time around, right? All right, I think I went on enough about it today. I hope this helped you guys out. I really do. Uh, if not, of course, leave questions in the comments below and all that jazz. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention. Please remember that I sell screen printing equipment and supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. If you like what you see, subscribe, rate thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.